Palantir and Plug and Tesla and Neo. That's why I see a stock like Jivo having the ability to 100x in the future and be a $1,000 stock. It currently sits at just $2 billion. I believe if they execute, we could be looking at a $200 billion company in the future because I'm going to be posting more stocks that I think in 10x or even 100x like Jivo. And I plan to hold Jivo for a strong three years into Biden's presidency. Daily analysis on stocks, make sure you check out the Patreon below. I'm going to be picking a lot more penny stocks because I know a lot of you guys want to grow a small portfolio so make sure you join the community it all comes with a private discord so check it out and then he's further pitching penny stocks then he's probably going to say that he learned how to trade penny stocks at goldman sachs and at his hedge fund job i mean that's completely ridiculous trading penny stocks and forex is one of the riskiest things that you could possibly do that just basically shows that he doesn't care at all about his audience if he's going to recommend that they trade penny stocks all nonsense okay if they if anyone tells you nvidia is a good stock they're not investors they're not investors okay it just doesn't make sense. But again, like I'm risking a lot here. I have, everyone's making those NVIDIA videos. Um, everyone's like pumping YouTube videos for the views, for the views, you know, because YouTube pays us. But I don't really care about the YouTube money. I really don't care. I mean, look, NVIDIA, I'm, I'm not going to pump a stock to, to get more views. I, I really don't care. Okay. So it just doesn't make sense to me. NVIDIA is already like, if I look at the statistics, the reason we got to this conversation, I mean, you got to be kind of insane. Like you have no financial education. If you're watching other YouTubers that are like, oh, buy NVIDIA. Like, please unsubscribe to those YouTubers. They don't know what they're talking about. Like, come around now, even, even Tesla, okay? I look at Tesla. Now, Tesla's becoming actually a value stock. I like Tesla. I like where Tesla's going uh, a lot. Right, so he likes Tesla at 230 and currently is trading at about 175. And then he sold naked calls and didn't like NVIDIA at 470. And now NVIDIA is trading over $900. Because Upstart is still a relatively young company and in a high growth mode, which implies that there should be opportunities for Upstart to reinvent itself and also to consider acquisitions. Invest with Henry. Is Invest with Henry a scam or is he legitimate? A few people asked me to give my thoughts about Invest with Henry. I've worked as an investment banker and at numerous investment banks. I worked at Morgan Stanley, CIBC World Markets, and Petsky Prunier, which is a prestigious M&A investment bank. I've also worked with many Goldman Sachs bankers, including John Woodby, who left Goldman to work with us as a managing director. So I'm definitely very familiar with the industry. Although it may seem elitist, unless there was a one-off situation, you were not getting a top internship unless you had amazing grades from an amazing school. I remember having 50 resumes thrown on my desk at 11 p.m. and being told to sort them into two piles. And basically what I did was I looked at the school and the GPA and I would give each resume about 10 seconds and then I would sort them. Then when I was interviewing candidates, it was basically the same thing. The reason is that if we take a chance on someone who didn't go to a target school or who didn't get great grades and they don't work out, then we could potentially get into trouble. Also, interns have virtually zero responsibility. I have zero practical knowledge. I learned more finance in one month as an investment banker than I did in four years while at Cornell University. Regarding Invest with Henry, he did not work in trading. He likely worked in internal auditing or some back office function. Plus, Goldman Sachs makes almost all their trading income as a market maker or when they route their orders to exchanges and receive payment for order flow. Does this mean that Goldman doesn't engage in any prop trading? No, they definitely do, but it's such a finite part of their revenue. Then looking back on his videos, he was telling people buy Colgate because people brush their teeth. That was his analysis. Do you brush your teeth? Okay, well, buy Colgate. Do you like coffee? Well, then buy Starbucks. I mean, that's not necessarily the worst device, but it's also extremely simple and there's no analysis behind it, which is completely fine. I don't think that Colgate or Starbucks are bad companies, but there's nothing magical about that advice. So if you look back to some of his earliest videos, he's all about buy and hold and providing very simplistic advice. His advice of, do you drink coffee? Do you brush your teeth? Buy these stocks. I mean, okay, that's fine. And to be fair, that's not the worst advice because oftentimes people invest in things that they don't understand. But there's also no strategy in that. Invest with Henry and Henry was not a trader. He worked in risk or internal auditing. And I wouldn't be surprised if he never spoke to any traders at Goldman Sachs because as an intern, you don't know anything. Additionally, it's a significant litigation risk to Goldman Sachs to give their interns any type of legitimate responsibility 
because that type of responsibility is for their full-time employees, not their interns. Goldman profits by providing a service as a market maker and also providing liquidity to the market. You think that institutional traders have this crazy knowledge and that they're wheelers and dealers. That is completely false. Oftentimes, all they're doing is they're matching buyers with sellers and then profiting from the bid-ask spread differential and making a riskless profit of a few basis points for every trade that they make. But the interesting thing about this is that institutional traders have zero knowledge that is transferable to retail traders. Because as retail traders, you are not able to make markets. Looking at his oldest videos, it's about selling pens to strangers. In my opinion, Henry is just a salesman. I also do not believe that he received a full-time offer from Goldman Sachs. I believe that Goldman rejected him because they did not believe that he was Goldman material. This information is discoverable in litigation. When I sued Option Alpha in federal court, Kirk Duplessis claimed that he worked as an investment banker at Deutsche Bank. So we then subpoena Deutsche Bank in order to receive those records. And in Henry's case, he didn't go to a target school. He worked in a group which is not prestigious. And I also believe that he did not receive a full-time offer and was rejected from Goldman Sachs. So for him to claim that he learned all this finance while working as an intern is completely crazy. I remember when as an investment banker, we would hire new associates who just completed their MBA and they were horrible for about three to four months. They had all theoretical knowledge, but zero practical knowledge. And invest with Henry, now he talks about options. He talks about how he learned options trading at Goldman Sachs, which in my opinion is completely false. And he's just using it as a way to build credibility and trust with his audience but what he's teaching you is not anything special at all. Plus, he's made numerous bad claims. He recommended a company at $10, which has now lost about 95% of its value. He also encouraged his followers to unsubscribe from any YouTube channel, which encouraged you to purchase NVIDIA. This was when NVIDIA was trading at around $470, and now NVIDIA is trading at around $900. He then encouraged his followers to buy Tesla when Tesla was trading at about $230 to $240. So during that time frame, Tesla has fallen by about 30% and Nvidia has gone up by another 100%. In my opinion, he only pivoted to options because he realized that that's what his audience enjoyed and that's what he could sell to his audience. In one of his earlier videos, he indicates that he had a problem with gaming where he was playing video games for over five hours a day. He was just a buy and hold guy who had no money. People are more honest when they aren't motivated by greed. In his earlier videos about Tesla, he didn't mention Goldman Sachs at all. Instead, his main thesis was, buy Tesla, Elon Musk is a genius. Then, as time progresses, he starts embellishing his Wall Street experience. Now, regarding his options trading advice, does it have any value? I think that there are many worse people out there than Invest With Henry. I really do. So even though I think that he's not a profitable trader and a lot of his advice is garbage and that some of the people who have followed him have lost a lot of money, I think that his current options trading advice is very simple, but it's not necessarily bad. The biggest problem that I have is that during a market correction, I think that he's going to lose a lot of money because I haven't seen him hedge any of his positions. So I definitely think that there are a lot worse people out there. But do I think that you'll make money by following him? No, I definitely don't. In some of his earlier videos, he joked that he needs money. But remember, there's always a little bit of truth in jokes. That's what makes them funny. And then you can see that he has a propensity towards sales because his first two videos were about selling pens to strangers. He mentioned that when he was growing up, he had no money and that he missed out on experiences that some of his friends were able to partake in. And this might have been very traumatic for him. He also mentioned that in his mid-20s, he would do anything for money. People who are trained in sales, who have childhood trauma, and who have very addictive personalities, such as with gaming and money, are very dangerous. And in my opinion, during a bear market, virtually all of Henry's followers are going to get crushed. He was wrong on NVIDIA, and not only that, he was extremely overconfident telling his subscribers to unsubscribe from anyone who believes in NVIDIA. He encouraged his members to purchase Tesla, calling it a value stock at $230, when NVIDIA was trading at $470. He pushed a garbage stock called GEVO, G-E-V-O, when it was trading at about $10, which since that video has lost around 95% of its value. 
And his options trading strategies are very basic. Wheel trading, naked options, and spreads. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he never spoke to any traders at Goldman Sachs. I actually did a rotational program in internal auditing at Morgan Stanley, and we worked in a completely separate building. For him to say that he quit Goldman Sachs because there was no additional finance that they could teach him is completely ridiculous. As an intern who's working in a non-revenue producing group, that's just so ridiculous. When I was at CIBC, we hired Brendan Cahill, who had just finished his MBA program at Columbia University, one of the best programs in the entire world. And Brendan was horrible for three to four months. He was horrible. I remember not wanting to work with him because he couldn't add any value and he would just slow me down. But after three to four months, he started to add a lot of value and he was great. So for an MBA student from one of the best programs in the world to add zero value for three to four months in investment banking, but then for an undergraduate student like Henry to claim that he learned all this finance by working at Goldman Sachs as an intern in a non-prestigious group that doesn't generate any revenue is completely ridiculous. And like I said, I bet that he didn't even receive an offer from Goldman Sachs. Think about it. He grew up poor. He went to a non-target school. He had an opportunity to work in some capacity at Goldman. You're telling me that if they offered him an internship, that he would turn it down. The probability of that is close to 0%. Plus, it doesn't even make sense because let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that he really wanted to work in trading or investment banking. If he did receive an offer from Goldman, which I highly doubt that he did, but if he did, and then he was able to do an amazing job and show that he was valuable for six to 12 months, all he would have to do is shoot one email to HR and request an internal transfer to equity capital markets or investment banking or institutional trading. And then they would interview him and he would actually be given priority because he's already a Goldman employee. It's very easy to switch groups. I know this because I switched groups while at CIBC World Markets from industrials to financial restructuring. Now, granted, I did have to threaten that I would quit, but after I told them that I was going to quit, I interviewed with financial restructuring and then they approved the internal transfer. Continue watching because I'm going to show you a lot of clips and my feedback on the Invest with Henry videos so that way you can gain additional insight. When it comes to stocks, stocks are going to go up, they're going to go down, and especially in this really tough environment. Uh, coronavirus businesses are struggling. I'm struggling. Everyone's really struggling. So this is his first stock market video. Notice that he mentions that he's struggling. And I believe he also mentions it later in this video or in the following video. Stock market is going to go down because investors were scared. They're panicking. They are afraid. But it's actually a great opportunity if you want to get started and you want to invest. It's a good opportunity for the long term if you have patience. Let me go into a quick example. Did you like coffee? A lot of people like coffee. Starbucks. It's a great company that sells decent coffee. Um, some people like Dunkin. Anyways, it's you can't refute that Starbucks sells a ton of coffees per day. Now, as long as they continue selling coffee, they're going to continue making sales and the stock will go up over time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's not necessarily the worst reason to buy Starbucks, but it's not profound analysis. That being said, though, buying things that you use, buying things that you understand, is a good strategy because many people do invest their money into companies that they really don't understand the product and they tend to overcomplicate their trading. What that means is if you buy Starbucks, you're patient and you wait a year, two years, three years down the road when coronavirus totally is in the back seat, hopefully, and I really hope so, Starbucks stock will go up. It will go up and if you bought it at a price that is lower than it is in the future and you go ahead and sell it, you will make money. Yeah, he's right. Buy and hold is a very good strategy, especially when you buy and hold legitimate companies like Starbucks. There's nothing wrong with that. Is that analysis profound? No, it's not. But it's good advice. Here's another question. Do you guys brush your teeth? Yeah, I kind of thought you would say yes. If you said no, I kind of turned this video off and I think you're really weird. Brushing your teeth is really important, just like eating to stay alive, pretty much. So a consumer staples company um, that you might have heard of is called Colgate. Colgate sells like, you know, all cut types of stuff like toothbrushes and toothpaste and a ton of other products. But listen, people are going to have to brush their teeth in good times and bad times in between. 
Yeah, again, this is great advice and it's also very simple advice. And if you invest in a company that sells consumer staples products, they're probably going to do pretty well as long as you hold for a long period of time, no matter what the times are. So you should really get started and buy companies that you enjoy and that you like the products in and that you can kind of not live without, such as toothpaste. So that's it. Two simple stocks. I'm not saying you should buy them, but you should look into them and think about what products and services you like to buy from. If you invest in a company that sells consumer staples products, they're probably going to do pretty well as long as you hold for a long period of time, no matter what. Yeah, buy and hold. Very simple advice, but also valuable. So what's next? Well, what's next is you use my Robinhood link and sign up so I can get one free share of stock and I can kind of pay my editor because he still has that in my videos and I still have to pay him. Again, times are super rough to say the least. Now, Robinhood is a free trading app. You open up the account, you find your favorite stock, you click buy when the market is open, and then you patiently wait for the stock to go up and then you sell when you're happy with your gains. Um, and hopefully you have gains unless you pick the really crappy stock like some... I don't know, some random solar company in the middle of nowhere. Um, that's dangerous. I'm not saying you should go for dangerous penny stocks or low value companies. You should go for your favorite companies. And if you have an iPhone, you like, you know, Apple products, go for Apple or go with Starbucks or Colgate that I mentioned. So here he mentions not investing in speculative companies and going with something like Starbucks and Colgate. He also mentioned that he's struggling and that he's going through a difficult time. Of advice, everyone needs basic goods like toilet paper, detergent, and toothpaste, but clearly not razors as I... So he's here recommending Procter & Gamble, which is pretty good. Don't forget to smash the like button because I really want you guys to subscribe and like these videos so I can make a ton more and keep sharing some of my knowledge and advice because, you know, I went to college for finance and I want to put that finance degree to use because I'm not really using it. And I just love making YouTube videos. So my gut feeling from watching these videos is that he went to college, he majored in finance, he got an internship at Goldman. They likely did not extend him a full-time offer. He was unemployed back in 2020. He didn't have much money. He was down on his luck. So he started making YouTube videos and YouTube content. And then he obviously didn't think that he would have over 250,000 subscribers. So in the beginning, he was experimenting. He was being extremely honest. He was giving better advice, not trying to monetize his audience telling people to invest in stocks that sell products that they use every single day, encouraging them to buy and hold. But he has no special training. Working at Goldman in internal auditing or risk management provides you with zero transferable skills that you can use for retail trading. Hey, it's Henry, ex-Goldman Sachs, ex-Hedge Fund, finance degree, options trading guru here. So many people... Okay, he's going from, I'm struggling, please use my Robin Hood link to have a finance degree, but I'm not using it at all, to former Goldman Sachs and former hedge fund employee and options trading expert. So he's really increasing the sales pitch. Here you can see that he's riding Tesla during the pandemic and his views are increasing. Almost everything is Tesla and Virgin Galactic and Elon Musk. Just on dollar cost averaging, in my view on what I learned about it at Goldman Sachs, just drop a comment. I'd be happy to share that in another video. While I was working as a quant, I studied earning. So now you see he's throwing in a lot of words like Goldman Sachs, working as a quant. In my opinion, it's false. He worked at a very low prestige group at Goldman Sachs, and he probably did not receive an offer. And then if he worked at a hedge fund, again, without much experience, he's probably not learning anything that's transferable to retail trading. But he's going to throw that in in order to try to build credibility. So that's three stocks I invested in. Now, for the bonus, if you're still watching, I've been trading options for seven years and learned from multi-millionaires on Wall Street. But I want to be honest. That Goldman Sachs makes money as a market maker. They also get paid for order flow. And he wasn't even working in a trading group at Goldman Sachs. And then at this quote unquote hedge fund that he's claiming, he probably was doing back office things, working as an intern, not having a full time position. Or if he did, it was a low level position without much responsibility. But of course, this goes back to the very first video regarding sales. And he's trying to build credibility with his audience to add social proof that what he's telling you has value. The options are extremely complicated, and I do not recommend them for most investors. I lost tens of thousands of dollars acquiring the knowledge and making mistakes while learning to trade options. And it is far from a beginner investing activity. Well, I just got assigned to shares on Friday. And basically, because the shares fell below $12, I was forced into buying 800 shares. 
And my strategy is I will do something called the wheel, where on Monday, I now own the stock and I own 800 shares. I will sell eight covered calls. And Okay, so his strategy is to run the wheel while trading options. And that's what he's claiming that he learned from multimillionaire options traders on Wall Street. That's a complete joke. Now, I'm not saying that the wheel is a bad strategy. If you feel that a stock is oversold and you want to take ownership at the strike price and then participate in the upside while also selling cover calls against it, then that's completely fine. But to have him come out and say that a basic strategy that almost everyone knows is the secret that he learned while working at Goldman Sachs from multimillionaire options traders, it's completely ridiculous. Collect another $400. Then he starts talking about the popular stocks like Palantir and Plug and Tesla and Neo. 100x in the future India $1,000 stock and currently sits at the irreversible path to a net zero emissions economy by 2050. That's why I see a stock like Jivo having the ability to 100x in the future India $1,000 stock and currently sits at just $2 billion. I believe if they execute, we could be looking at a $200 billion company in the future. There is more stuff I'm going to get into about Jivo in a second, but first, make sure you subscribe and join notification gang because I'm going to be posting more stocks that I think in 10x or even 100x like Jivo, and I plan to hold Jivo for a strong three years into Biden's presidency. So here he recommended Jivo, even though he explicitly said during these earlier videos that you should buy legitimate companies that sell products that you use and just hold on to them. And then when he was pitching his Robinhood link, he explicitly told you, to not purchase risky companies like solar companies or things of that nature. And as you can see, Jivo, at the time of this video, was trading at $10.16, G-E-V-O. And now, Jivo is trading at $0.82. Cent. So if you had followed his advice, you would have lost over 90% of your money. And he owned this stock. And he was planning on holding it for three years. So what kind of investor is he if he recommends to his audience and he buys himself a speculative stock that goes down 92%. If you want to see my daily analysis on stocks, make sure you check out the Patreon below. I'm going to be picking a lot more penny stocks because I know a lot of you guys want to grow a small portfolio. So make sure you join the community. It all comes with a private Discord, so check it out. And then he's further pitching penny stocks. Then he's probably going to say that he learned how to trade penny stocks at Goldman Sachs and at his hedge fund job. I mean, that's completely ridiculous. Trading penny stocks and Forex is one of the riskiest things that you could possibly do. That just basically shows that he doesn't care at all about his audience if he's going to recommend that they trade penny stocks. $2,000 a day consistently. And if you are consistent or trying to learn how to invest, listen up because I'm going to teach you what I learned at Goldman Sachs. I've been investing for 10 years and keeping it simple is what I'm all about. I don't like complex trading or risky day trading or swing trading or anything like that. I'm writing a book. So he doesn't like risky trading, even though he encouraged his audience to buy a stock that ended up falling over 90%. And then he's going to continue to recommend penny stocks because he knows that that's what his audience wants. And that he also claims that his trades make him $2,000 a day. That is incredibly risky to say that in an advertisement because he can get subpoenaed, he can get shut down by the FTC, he can get sued. That's just predatory marketing. I'm writing a bootcamp which will guarantee to teach you the simple indicators and setup I have for trading very profitably on a consistent basis with low volatility. The bootcamp and here and here. My account is also just a straight line with no volatility and consistent profits. So make sure you click the link and check out my special limited time live bootcamp, which only has a few spots if you're watching this video right now. Consistent profits. What about that 92% loss that you took on that? Spending over a million dollars per year as both an option trader, primarily as well as a coach. And my gut feeling is that he's making all his money from his discord and virtually nothing from trading. But let's see what he says. You know. No BS here, let's just jump right into the content. I used to be a game addict where I was playing like eight hours of video games per day and I was just trying to escape my reality, which was growing up in a poor household, not really having access to too many things. So I didn't really have too much opportunities to actually do fun things. So I was just basically playing video games all the time. And I knew in the back of my mind that something wasn't right. And that was actually the finances in my family. So both my parents had come from Eastern Europe and one of the most difficult things was that they didn't know how to speak English. So we spoke Russian at home and, you know, we never really had the opportunity to go out and do too much because my dad was washing dishes, mopping floors. My mom was sitting with me. Eventually she did get a job as a front desk receptionist, but the hourly rate is like 12 to $14 per hour. So for me, I was really, really money hungry until I was about 26 years old. That's very dangerous. And notice how we put extra emphasis on really, really 
money hungry until 26 years old because it seems like he might have some childhood trauma regarding his lack of finances when he was growing up. He feels that he missed out on opportunities. He couldn't partake in things that other kids his age were able to do. And because of that, in his own words, he was very money hungry. This is very dangerous because when someone is very money hungry, they're going to act in a very selfish manner and do everything possible to obtain as much money as quickly as possible. And they're not going to care about anything else. They're not going to care about their behavior or their actions or who they're going to have to hurt or who they're going to have to destroy in order to obtain that money. Because his primary goal is to make sure that he never ends up in a similar position to what he experienced during his childhood. So I wasn't actually trading options, though. I was in the risk management hit, as we call it. So, Yeah, so he's probably doing internal auditing. But again, he's working in an internship. He has zero responsibility. Imagine the liability that Goldman Sachs would have to give an intern with zero prior experience and who's not even a full-time employee any type of responsibility. The reality is that he was shadowing a full-time employee in the internal auditing or the internal risk group and trying to learn as much as possible about that specific group. And think about it. If you're coming from a really poor background and now you're working at Goldman Sachs, despite the fact that you went to a mediocre non-target school like Drexel, are you really going to turn down a full-time offer from Goldman Sachs? Of course not. I would estimate that there's about an 85 to 90% probability that Goldman Sachs was not satisfied with his performance and he did not receive a full-time offer. Despite the fact that the group is not prestigious at all, I believe that Goldman did not feel that he was cut out to be a full-time employee and they did not extend him an offer. That means that I was sitting next to professional option traders and basically managing the risk and making sure there were no, no issues when they were making any trade. I also disagree with this. I don't think that he had any interaction with options traders. They're in a different group. I remember when I was working at Morgan Stanley, the internal auditing and the risk was located at 52nd and 9th Avenue and was also located in Harborside, New Jersey, whereas the primary business operations and the trading was done at 1585 Broadway. And I read countless books that summer. And the reason why I wanted to become a technology consultant and not keep working in Binance was because I wanted freedom of trading. See, when you work at a hedge fund or you're a buy side analyst, you're actually not allowed to trade your own money because you have advantaged information. And that, that is 100% not true. Now, it is true. If you're working at an investment bank, if I was working on an M&A deal and the information was non-public, then obviously I couldn't purchase shares in the target company knowing that we were working on an M&A transaction because that information was not public. But hedge funds oftentimes allow you to trade your personal account. What he's saying is just completely 100% false. Actually regulated by the SEC. So for me, I was really just... He's claiming that it's regulated by the SEC. That is not true. Unless you're trading on private, non-public information, then there are not restrictions and you can trade whatever you want. To work in finance because I'd already learned everything I need to. I was already super confident my ability to generate income. So I ended up getting a tech job. I have a new one-on-one -on -one trading program. Lower volatility, lower risk, good return. I don't know. Nobody can match that, okay? No, nobody can match that. I don't know what people are promising. All nonsense, okay? If, they, if anyone tells you NVIDIA is a good stock, they're not investors. They're not investors, okay? It just doesn't make sense. But again, like I'm risking a lot here. I have uh, 25 contracts here, quite a lot of money. It's kind of like a no-brainer play. It's really, really risky, but yeah. In fact, I, I'm short NVIDIA. That's part of the reason why um, the price-to-sales ratio as well as the price-to-earnings ratio. So something that you'll notice right here is, uh, you know, everyone's talking about NVIDIA and here's NVIDIA right here. But honestly, I'm not a fan of NVIDIA. In fact, I, I'm short NVIDIA. That's part of the reason why in this account right here, which I was showing in the beginning, I'm making money. I'm doing something a little bit risky, which is really not for most of you YouTube people. It's really for not even for my Discord people. It's really for my top tier bootcamp members that really have a solid understanding of option trading. They have six months of profit in a row, like six months in a row. And then we can get into something called naked call selling. I don't really advocate it for literally 99% of even you guys watching because um, it's really, it's really, really risky. But, you know, essentially, I already knew this. I already knew that NVIDIA was not going to have the best earnings. Even if I had okay earnings, it was not going to pop up that much higher, which is why I ended up selling, well, I sold six hundred fifty dollar uh, calls here. It's kind of like a no brainer play. I mean, obviously, it's going to be successful because it's super out of the money. So I was like even more safe than I needed to be. But again, like I'm risking a lot here. I have uh, twenty five contracts here, quite a lot of money, and I just know, guys, everyone's making those Nvidia videos. Uh, everyone's like pumping YouTube videos for the views, for the views, you know, because YouTube pays us. But I don't really care about the YouTube money. I really don't care. I mean. Look, NVIDIA, I'm, I'm not going to pump a stock to, to get more views. I, I really don't care, okay? So 
it just doesn't make sense to me. And video is already like, if I look at the statistics, the reason we got to this conversation was if we look at the statistics, I mean, look, the four P ratio is 60, the current P ratio is 245. I mean, you gotta be kind of insane. Like you have no financial education. If you're watching other YouTubers that are like, oh, buy NVIDIA, like please unsubscribe to those YouTubers. They don't know what they're talking about. So I guess he means that you should unsubscribe from him because he has no idea what he's talking about. I believe NVIDIA is now the third largest company in the world by market cap. And there's a possibility they will soon overtake Apple. Also, selling naked calls is astronomically risky. You're just asking to lose half of your account in one trade. On the one hand, he's talking about trying to beat the S&P and get risk-adjusted returns, but that trade alone can cost him a tremendous amount of money. We're promising all nonsense, okay? If, they, if anyone tells you NVIDIA is a good stock, they're not investors. They're not investors, okay? It's funny because I'm only clicking on a few of his videos and in each one of his videos, he says something completely ridiculous that would cost his followers a tremendous amount of money. In my opinion, if you take his advice, you're going to cost yourself a lot of money. It just doesn't make sense. Okay, valuation's off. Price of sales, 45. Like, come around now, even, even Tesla, okay? I look at Tesla. Now, Tesla's becoming actually a value stock. I like Tesla. I like where Tesla's going uh, a lot. Right, so he likes Tesla at 230. And currently he's trading at about 175. And then he sold naked calls and didn't like NVIDIA at 470. And now NVIDIA is trading over $900. So he recommended to short NVIDIA at 470. And since that time, the price of the stock has doubled. And he recommended investing in Tesla. And since that time, Tesla is down an additional 25%. 45? Like, come around now. Even, even Tesla. Okay, I look at Tesla. Now, Tesla's becoming actually a value. I like Tesla. I like where Tesla's going uh, a lot, actually. If I go to the statistics tab right here, the forward PE is still high, but there's a difference, guys, okay? The forward PE is high here, but it's going to be coming down because uh, Tesla's earnings are still going up a lot, which is also true for NVIDIA. But the difference is the price of sales on NVIDIA was, was freaking, what, five times more? And for Tesla, it's only 8.76. So this makes a lot of sense for me. Um, it's not as expensive. Keep it very simple and uh, things are going very well, very well. Even though I am down in the past three months, I am down. I am down, guys. I'm admitting I am down. But I think many people are... Um, yeah, that's the big problem with this strategy. You'll make money when the market goes up. But during times when the market goes down, you're going to get crushed because he doesn't hedge his positions at all. His trading strategy is very risky. Selling naked calls on NVIDIA. He's encouraging you to buy stocks that have fallen over 90%. But also looking at his portfolio, he has a lot of great companies in there. The problem is that he does not hedge his position at all. So the next time that VIX spikes up over 30 and we have a 10 to 20% pullback, he is going to get completely annihilated. Tesla, how much do you have of Tesla? What's your thoughts on Tesla? Because it's pretty controversial. A lot of people think that Tesla is like the next, they still think that it's going to like double and triple. Okay, and the rest of these positions are out pretty far. You know, it's a little bit of a bet here on Booker Express and so far it has bitten me um, in a not so comfortable area. So Tesla, you know, kind of hurting there. American Airlines and, and that's really it. Okay, and the rest of these positions are out pretty far. I have Oatly and some people, oh my gosh, I got an email the other day. I have, uh, you're pushing Neo, you have uh, Oatly, you have losses, blah, blah, blah. Look, I'm human. I'm going to have some losses. But here's the thing. I'm not a moron. To so let's see, he has 2,600 shares of Oatly. So Oatly, now Oatly is trading at a dollar. So there's a high probability that he got crushed there. So, you know, Neo, is it a good stock? I think so. Some people have lost money on Neo. It's understandable. I've been doing selling puts and cover calls on Neo for a very long time okay, at many, many different price points. And I've made a lot of money and I've lost, you know, uh, actually more than half of what I made. But the point is, I'm actually up on Neo since the beginning. So I get a lot of, you know, folks kind of, you know, pushing on me. But I just want to let you know that if you're part of the journey over the long term. So overall, taking everything into account, I think that Henry is someone who grew up without a lot of money. He experienced some difficult times, and there's a high likelihood that some of his experiences as a child scarred him psychologically. So he was driven from a very young age to make as much money as possible. That way, his adult life would not be a repeat of his childhood life. He went to college. He had the opportunity to work at Goldman Sachs. I don't believe that he learned anything of value at Goldman Sachs at all, especially as an intern. It's my opinion that he did not receive a full-time offer to Goldman. Think about it. Goldman is extremely prestigious. If you come from a low-income background and then you're presented with a full-time offer to Goldman Sachs, why would you not accept that? He, he might say that it's in a non-target group. He wasn't working directly with trading, 
But the reality is that you can start off in one group in internal auditing or risk and then easily transfer to equity capital markets or trading or even investment banking. If you do a great job in one group, then the company will want to keep you. It's my opinion that he did not receive an offer. Then he probably got a little bit depressed because things didn't work out in his job. So then he started gaming and wasting a lot of time. He then started posting some YouTube videos and he gained a lot of traction. And he was pandering to his audience and telling them whatever they wanted to hear in order to grow, making a lot of videos on Tesla, Palantir, Neo, etc., making videos and recommendations about penny stocks. Regarding his options trading strategy, I don't think there's anything special about it. It's my opinion that a lot of his followers over the long term are going to end up losing money. I also believe that during a bull market, a lot of his followers will do very well. However, during a pullback, I believe that almost all of his followers are going to lose upwards of 50% of their account value by following him. He doesn't utilize any hedging, and his trading strategy is very, very simple. I don't think that there's anything worthwhile in there that you need to actually pay for. You can just watch his videos and learn his strategies if you are very interested in learning how he trades. But I don't think that there's anything special about his trading strategy at all. Because Upstart is still a relatively young company and in a high growth mode, which implies that there should be opportunities for Upstart to reinvent itself and also to consider acquisitions. However, CFO Sanjay was quick to explain in earning both the belt process that goes into the share repurchase program. Basically, it's actually not a... In my overall opinion, I definitely believe that there are many, many worse channels that you can learn from than Invest with Henry. He doesn't front run his followers. He has a tendency to invest in larger companies that are more stable and that are market leaders. However, he doesn't hedge his positions. He's also undisciplined by selling naked calls. He's also wrong a lot. He's even told you that you should unsubscribe and not listen to people who are bullish on NVIDIA when NVIDIA was trading at 470 and now it's twice that price, whereas Tesla has fallen an additional 25% from when he was looking at it. So if you want to follow him for entertainment purposes, then that's completely fine. But overall, my opinion is that during the next bear market, I believe that his followers are going to end up getting crushed. Leave your comments below and I'll do my best to answer all of your questions.